In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on the capital asset pricing model and more specifically the security market line or SML and how to identify stocks which are under overvalued or maybe correctly priced on the SML. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question which I want us to have a go at. Which of the following statements is least likely correct with regard to the SML, the security market line? Stocks lying below the SML are undervalued. Stocks lying on the SML are valued correctly. Or maybe stocks lying above the security market line offer a return in excess of the return required by the market. So, a purely theoretical question, one which sounds relatively easy, doesn't it? Uh, however, many people get this wrong because they fail to realize what the relationship between the SML and whether a stock is undervalued, overvalued, or correctly priced really is. So, let me depict this graphically. Obviously, I'm going to draw a chart where on the vertical axis I'm going to have the expected return on a stock or in a portfolio. And over here, beta, which is a measure of the risk which that portfolio exposes us to, obviously just the systematic risk component of it, the market risk. And over here I'm going to label the rate of return um, on a risk-free asset. And the SML, the security market line, is basically this line, which shows us the relationship between the level of risk as measured by beta and the rate of return required by um, under the cap and model from holding that specific portfolio or, or security. Now, if for a specific stock, it you know its expected return or its holding period return is exactly equal to the rate of return required by uh, under the cap and model, then um, you know that stock is going to be um, correctly priced. However, what about those securities which lie above or below? Well, let's imagine one over here, one below the um, line. For this security, its expected return or its holding period return, the one that we predict for it, is actually you know lower than the one that would be predicted given its level of risk under the cap and model. So this is lower than the required rate of return. The reason for this being that this stock is overvalued. It doesn't produce enough yield, it doesn't produce enough return because its price is simply too high. Now, the reverse is true for uh, the securities that lie above the uh, SML. So let's say over here we're going to have a stock and for this one its holding period of return or the return which we expect from it is actually higher than the rate of return required under the cap m model so this rr is the one predicted or dictated by the cap m model you know this is the rr whereas whereas this stock is expected to produce significantly more why because this stock is undervalued. That's the driver for it generating, ex, you know, ex, us expecting it to uh, generate higher returns than those predicted by the CAPA model. So let's see which one of these answers is actually in line with what we just wrote down. Uh, stocks, well, we're looking for the one which is least likely correct, so the wrong one effectively. Stocks lying below the security market line, such as this one, are undervalued. No, that's that's wrong, definitely wrong, because they are actually overvalued. So we've already identified the answer to this question. It's going to be A, uh, it's incorrect, making it the answer to this question. Let's have a look at the other ones. Stocks lying on the security market line are valued correctly. Yes, that's absolutely um Right, we said this, so valued correctly. And stocks lying above the security market line, like over here, offer a return in excess of the return required by the market, right? Required given the level of systematic risk. That's absolutely fine. Which just confirms that the answer to this question was indeed answer A.